Hey guys, my name is Craig and I currently run 12 dropshipping stores that do over $400,000 in revenue every single month. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make $15,000 profit in February 2024 using dropshipping. This won't be another guide waffling about outdated and useless information. This is going to be a step by step guide of exactly what I would do to get $15,000 profit in one single month using dropshipping. To get to $15,000 profit in February 2024, we need to do six different steps that I've laid out right here. So the first step is account and store creation, then product research, then listing products, then traffic and ads, then the actual shipping out and the dropshipping method, and then also avoiding bans and avoiding any complications, okay? So let's get straight into things. Which platform and which marketplace are we gonna be selling on? Is it TikTok? Is it Snapchat, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram? Actually, it's a little known, basically unknown method called Etsy dropshipping. So right now you're probably in one of two different categories. Maybe you've heard a little bit about Etsy. Maybe your mum's bought from Etsy in the past, or you're thinking, what the fuck is Etsy? Okay. So let me explain. Etsy is a marketplace just like Amazon or eBay, but it is designed for 40 year old women to sell on. Okay. So it's designed to be very, very simple. And the competition is also renowned to be incredibly, incredibly easy. So let's get straight into things. The first thing we are looking at is the account and store setup. So with Etsy, in order to actually start selling, we're gonna need an account and we're gonna need a store attached to that account, okay? So first things first, we are gonna go over warming, setup, account, age, profile picture, girl, question mark, how you should absolutely do everything. Honestly, the step is very, very, very simple, okay? First things first, if you already have an Etsy account that you have previously used, you've previously signed up, previously logged in with, and you've, I don't know, bought something for your mom, bought something for your girlfriend, that is the account you should use, and then you should almost skip ahead a couple seconds, okay? Because that is what you should use for the first account. Very, very simply, okay? Very, very simply. So, in terms of actually setting up the account, if you don't really have an account, there is a lot of kind of anti-spam and warming procedures that, that we should do, okay? They're very, very simple, but let's just go over them now, okay? So what you don't want to do is you don't want to make an account immediately on a brand new, fresh computer and you don't want to do that basically it looks very suspicious okay it looks very suspicious to etsy just as the same with amazon with ebay even with shopify paypal all these different online kind of websites where you're dealing with payments and obviously there's opportunity to screw people over you've got to think how a normal person would interact with the website so with Etsy, it's exactly the same as all these other websites. So you want to use one of the browsers that you previously be using. You have some history on it, okay? You want to use it on a normal, just a normal computer. You don't want to have your VPN turned on because a VPN looks suspicious to websites such as Etsy, even like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these different places look suspicious, okay? So you want to start that up. You want to go to Etsy.com sign up in the top right hand corner and then you just want to sign up using your email and then a password right right very 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 simple so once you've done this what you need to do is you need to go to the top right hand side click your profile and then also add some details about yourself okay it could be about yourself or you can be pretending to be someone that's a little bit older that's like perhaps an average age of an etsy seller which is a 40 or 39 year old woman okay but add a bio add a profile picture add a name go favorite some items, go just act like a normal person on the Etsy platform. So that's obviously a very quick warming process. Honestly, if you're a complete and utter beginner and this is your first store, you don't have to worry about any information apart from that, okay? Just get going with everything. So the next step is actually creating the storefront, okay? This is very, very, very simple. You're gonna want to go to etsy.com slash sell or in the top right-hand side, and click on the little profile and then go to the bottom of the pop down and click sell on Etsy. This is so incredibly simple, these steps, like so incredibly simple. Compared to setting up a Shopify site, it's I can't even express how fucking simple this is. So when you're making your Etsy store, you're gonna want to go through and you have to add a debit card, you have to add your address, you have to add some personal information as well, just to verify on Etsy side that you're a legit person and you're not a person that's coming onto the platform to scam others and not ship items and things like this, okay? So they just wanna check that you're actually a real human. It's perfectly safe to put your information in here and just go through that. 
One step you're gonna come across is adding a product. So in these initial stages, Etsy is gonna force you to add a product. So let's talk about that. So in step two, we're going to be talking about product research, but right now we don't need to worry about products. So what you need to do when it forces you to add a product to your Etsy store in the setup process, because the setup process won't go through without you doing that initial, adding that initial product, just add a digital product, okay? It can be anything ever, it doesn't matter. Just add a product, just put something on there. It can be a picture of your wall or something like this. It doesn't really matter what it is. You just wanna get past this step and get to the next step and open up your store. So after you've set up the store and you've completed it, you need to do two very quick things. So you need to add a logo, just go to a website called Canva or go to any website where it's a free logo maker. Just add a little logo, it doesn't matter too much, okay? The same thing with the shop name as well. It doesn't really matter too much. Just add something, choose something at random almost, and just get going with it, okay? You can also add a banner, but it's not really necessary. One thing that you should add is like the little about us bio section. Just add some little random thing about you love selling, you love crafting things, you love making items, you love bringing happiness to people, something like this. It doesn't really matter too much, okay? So once you've done that, you've pretty much made your store. You've made your account, you've made your store. Nothing was too complicated. You don't have to build a crazy big web website like you do on Shopify. You didn't have to do all these little tiny little details like you have to do on Amazon and actually have an interview with someone. That's how you actually open an Amazon store. You have to have an interview with an Amazon employee. You don't have to do any of that complicated stuff, okay? So we've now made this. Let's go on to the second step. Step two is product research and this is the most important thing, okay? This is the thing that sets people away from zero sales and 100 and 10,000 and 100 million sales, okay? This is the thing that sets people apart and it's product research so we're going to get into everything and i'm also going to detail some winning niches for you guys so me personally over the past four and a half years all of my product research methods have been through manual methods so that doesn't mean i'm using any fancy tools because a lot of these youtubers will tell you to use this tool and this tool and this tool the reason why they're telling you to do that is because they're getting paid thousands of dollars every single time they say that tool's name, okay? So I've refused all these deals because I personally don't use tools and all the big guys that I actually know that do dropshipping don't use any tools, okay? But I've said all this about tools. There's one little tiny Chrome extension you're gonna need that is completely free. There's no paid tier or anything like this. And it's called Search Image by AliExpress. AliExpress Search by Image. It's the one that has 200,000 users. You can find it very, very easily on the Chrome web store. So this is completely free. And we'll explain in a second what you're going to use this for. But for now, we're just going to come straight over to Etsy.com. So this is the homepage right here. And as I said, Valentine's Day is 14 days away. So we're just going to search about Valentine's Day products, okay? So it doesn't have to be about Valentine's Day. And at the end of this section, I will give some winning niches that aren't Valentine's Day niches. But for now, let's just go into Valentine's Day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to all filters on the left-hand side. I'm then going to click on star seller. So we're sorting just based upon star seller. We're also gonna enter a low price of $20 and a high price of $60. Then we're gonna click show results. So once we've done this, we're gonna come up to the search bar and when it says star, it says underscore star underscore seller, we're gonna change the word star to best. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna show us all of the best sellers on the Etsy platform. So this means items that have had explicitly high sales in the past 90 days. So by changing star to best, we have just filtered based upon all of the best sellers on the Etsy platform. So what this is gonna show us is the absolute best products that are selling in the past six months right now. So for Valentine's Day, this doesn't work so well because obviously Valentine's Day was over a year ago. So all the products that worked last year might not have been working the same time now, but we'll see what happens, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and I'm gonna show you a few different things. So first things first, what we're gonna look at is right here. We're gonna see, look, it says 4.8 stars and 534. And then this store has five stars and seven, okay? So what we're looking for is we are looking for over 25 reviews. So this little seven here, this little 534, is the amount of store reviews the total store has on Etsy, okay? Obviously, we're looking for above a 4.5 average as well, but we're mainly looking for 25 reviews and above, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up all of the products. You can focus on personalized items, but 
I think today, it depends on how hard, if Etsy blesses us with some good products, then, then we won't have to. But it depends on how hard it is to find some good products today. But we'll have a quick search around for five minutes and we'll check back in in a second. So right now I've opened up about 10 different tabs of products that are not personalized, but are Valentine's Day themes and are our best sellers between 20 and $60 as well. So the first product right here is a little Pingu penguin thing. And then we've got like a little heart in a box. We've also got resin watch straps. We've got crochet flowers. We've got a bunch of different items, okay. So the tool that I told you to download earlier, search goods on AliExpress by this image, that is where this tool comes in handy. So a lot of these items may actually be handmade, okay. So this item right here, the Valentine's Day decor, three tools standing, blah, 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 right? This item may be handmade, okay? So there's two different ways to do product research. So the first way is directly just finding products that are already drop shipping products and taking them, okay? And just straight taking them from other people, okay? But there's a second way. The second way is looking at this flower earring and then being inspired by this flower earring. Okay, we know it's got a ridiculous amount of reviews and it's sold tens of thousands of pieces and it's made tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars profit for the owner of the listing. So if we go onto AliExpress and we find a similar one to this, then, okay, it's gonna work well. Okay, or more than likely is gonna work well. So I'm gonna have a quick search through, see if we can find any of these products available on AliExpress. If not, then we'll go into kind of more similar items based upon these best selling ones right here. So literally the first product that I found, which is the Heart Dinosaur Plush right here, you can see that I've searched that up on AliExpress and you can see there's about a million different variations of dinosaur heart plushies. You can also see this heart necklace right here. There's some items that are very, very similar to that. Obviously there's very little pearl ones, tiny little necklaces, things like this. And you can see there's a tiny little like mini heart one right there that is very, very, very similar. Not exactly the same, but very, very, very similar. You see this one right here, it's very, very similar. Um, so that would be a good item to list. You can see this is like a toiletry bag for um, men's, yeah, like a toiletry rag. I don't really know how this is a Valentine's Day, but it's a bestseller in the Valentine's niche. But you can see that we found obviously a bunch of those here. That's not a particularly interesting or unique item. This one's a cool item though. So obviously people are buying this for Valentine's Day because it's just kind of generalized stuff. Valentine's Day gifts don't actually have to be specific to Valentine's, they don't have to have roses all over it and stuff like this. But this is a very cool gift for obviously a guy that's a bit of a nerd and is into fire dragon and I don't know, a bit of a nerd. This is kind of the interesting one, right? So you can see there is about a million different variations of that, loads of different cool, interesting ones. That one's got like um, an octopus, bunch of cool different things, right? So there's a lot of stuff there, okay? So there is so many different products here. And using this method of finding best sellers, we know that this product is already selling very, very well. You can see right here, it's got 40 reviews for this item. And based upon it having 40 reviews, we know it's gonna have anywhere from 200 to 400 units sold so far. So that basically means that by listing this product and slightly undercutting their pricing, we know we can make sales like pretty much with a very high degree of accuracy. We know we can list this product and actually make sales very, very quickly. So the best things to sell on the Etsy platform are always giftable products, okay? Giftable products work incredibly, incredibly well, okay? Ideally, the absolute top, top, top tier product is a product that can be giftable, but can also be bought for yourself. So like this resin lamb right here, you could buy that for yourself. I'm sure lots and lots of people buy that. Look at that one actually, 230 reviews. So based upon my estimations, that will have anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 orders, okay? And we can even see how many years it's been live. Let's have a quick look. So it's been live for like a little over a year and it's killing it it's killing it and they're making so much money right they're selling it for 60 dollars. i assume a lot of people actually buy the largest one as well so they're actually making probably 50 dollars a purchase so they've made twenty thousand dollars with just one single product right here right there's so much opportunity it's absolutely crazy so much opportunity so honestly with product research that first method that i've shown you right there is kind of all you need to know right you don't really need to know 10 different product research methods using 10 different tools you don't need to know all that information okay that product research method will get you going, will get you sales. And the strategy is come in, find products from 
other people and either sell something very, very similar that you find on AliExpress or copy the exact product. It's normally better to find something very, very similar and then undercut or change the pricing or get better photos or just change things slightly, okay? Change it ever so slightly. You don't wanna just copy one for one, obviously, because that's very, very obvious that you're just stealing from another person, okay? You're stealing their, don't steal their title tag subscription, okay? change things up a bit but that's what we'll talk about in part three or step three in just one second as well but that's how you find winning products okay like i found those resin lamps right there obviously i found a bunch of different products i found these dream catchers that's a very good product as well available on aliexpress this leaf leaf ring right here is very very cool um these earrings right here, I've seen something very, very similar on AliExpress before. These things, let's just have a quick look if these are available on AliExpress. I'm not sure if they are. But there's so many products available on Etsy that you can find on AliExpress. And you want to sell either similar items or exactly the same item, okay? So we can't find those ones quickly, so maybe that's a legit product. But over 70% of the products that we searched up, we were able to find on AliExpress. And these are best sellers. These are products that are making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars each and every single day. Step three is listing products. How do you go about actually adding a product to the Etsy platform? How do you go about it, okay? So I've written some notes here. Copy from others, don't spend four hours doing it. Obviously I said in the previous, like two minutes ago, don't copy one for one from others. But what you should do is magpie ideas. I remember in school being told to not steal from other writers, but magpie ideas, right? So let's say we were listing um, this, let's, which one was it? The resin lamp, okay? The resin lamp, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find photos available on AliExpress or similar Chinese websites, and we are going to add them and use them and download them from AliExpress. Normally they're okay to use, most of the time they're okay to use. Uh, like literally 99% of the time they're okay to use. If not 99.5% of the time they're okay to use. And we're going to use those photos on our store. We're going to change them a little bit. There's a bunch of different applications that you can use to do this. And then in terms of the title, tags and description, this is a very, very important part. And what you're gonna to want to do is look at other sellers, okay? Look at what other sellers are doing and what they are using to get their items sale. So let's look at this resin lamp right here that has easily made them $20,000 profit in the past year. So the title, we would pretty much steal one for one, but change a few things, okay? We don't wanna copy the homework exactly. It's like when you copy from a kid in school, you're gonna change it slightly, okay? So fire dragon and ice dragon resin wood lamp so we're going to kind of copy that main keyword so the initial five six words the initial phrase that is in the title is the most important phrase okay it's not the ending bit it's the most important bit is right at the beginning the first like typically three to six words the first kind of phrase is the most important part and you're going to want to hit on multiple keywords at one single time okay so they've obviously done like games of thrones um like obviously fire dragon and ice dragon maybe that's some sort of nerd game of thrones thing i'm not particularly familiar with it right but i would pretty much just copy this one for one i would like change the um location of certain things i'd maybe add some synonyms for dragon or for ice or resin or something like this just change it very very slightly okay and then by the way, I'm not overthinking this. I don't want you guys to overthink this. That's why I'm kind of going quickly through it, right? Obviously, there are a lot more things you can do with the images and a lot more things you can do with the titles, tags, and descriptions. But a very, very important thing is action when it comes to any business model in the planet, okay? You need to take action. You need to move quickly. So we've done the title, right? If you're following along, you move a couple things around, add extra couple words, remove a couple extra words. Typically try and keep the first three to six words the exact same and then move on, move on. We've got other shit to do, okay? So let's go to the description. You can see here, they basically, let's have a quick look. They pretty much just put the exact same title at the top of the description right there. Very, very similar, added some extra keywords, GOT. Oh, it means Game of Thrones. Just like nerdy stuff, right? Um, Mighty Fire Dragon, Mysterious Serious Ice Dragon. There are legend creatures with strong power. An Ice Dragon and Fire Dragon fly into the sky and litter powder is added to the resin to immediate effect. They've started to describe the, describe the item, okay? And they've also, each job is handmade and cannot be a copy, slightly different from the original, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, so they said how it's how it's made and stuff like this. And with resin and wood products, this is typically actually correct as well. Um, oh, I've just realized that the shipping cost on this is actually very expensive as well. So they're actually making a bunch of money. Um, and a very, very important thing to understand here is they have put in the sizing. Okay, so this is a very, very important thing. I've actually noticed one thing they've made a mistake with. I mean, it'd be a bit better if they added all the sizing to the description because they've done large size and small size, but there's only an extra large and a medium. A little bit confusing, right? But you're going to want to add the sizing or any extra information that the customer needs to know about their Etsy listing, like about the product into the description, okay? You want people to actually understand what they're doing and what they're buying. And that is the most important thing. Thing. You've also got information here about the lightings and how it can be changed and it's actually like an RGB thing So that's super cool as you can see here because maybe some people like again You got to think about these questions like maybe someone clicking that like wait Is there a red model? Oh, is there a blue one? I'm a little bit confusing actually a super super cool product to be honest um, Countries out of line, please buy the remote controls batteries because we can't ship country abroad I affirm that you choose our product is right. You will not be disappointed, right? So again, they're doing a little bit of sales at the bottom. Honestly, their description could be better. It does sound very very Kind of like a little bit broken English. Maybe it is translated by Etsy, but it's not perfect But it doesn't really matter, right? You want to have all the information in there. You want to have all the details about the item. You want to have the sizing and you want to also have some keywords as well because the description does matter for SEO, okay? So then in regards to the tags, you're kind of doing the same thing, right? Tags are very, very simple. You want to do, if example, your title is Fire Dragon and Ice Dragon and blah, blah, blah and Game of Thrones, all the stuff. You want to do Fire Dragon as one tag. Ice dragon resin as one tag, resin wood lamp as one tag, resin wood or wood lamp as another tag, 3D dragon, you get what I'm trying to say, okay? You do want to cover the 13 tags and you also want to hit on your main keyword multiple times as well, right? I don't want to overcomplicate it, keep it super, super simple and obviously get moving. The most important thing is you just get started and get going and get testing, okay? Don't overthink listings, right? Don't overthink things. Just honestly get started and get going. And that is actually how you are going to make $15,000 profit in February. Like I know there will be people that watch this video right now that come back in obviously the end of February message me saying thank you Craig so much you helped me so much I watched that video and I made a fuck ton of money okay so take action get the listings going get started get running so step four is traffic and advertising how are we going to bring traffic to our Etsy listings okay so if you've watched Shopify drop shipping videos before or make money online videos you know that you have to find people from somewhere you don't just start a website and get people do you right this is the interesting thing with Etsy because it's an organic marketplace. So it's like Amazon or like eBay, but it's like they were five, 10, 15 years ago when there was so many people on the platform and a lot of popularity, but there was very, very little supply of good products. So with Etsy, it's actually very easy to get organic traffic. And unlike with Amazon, where you have to spend thousands and thousands and thousands on cost per click campaigns, you don't have to do that, right? You don't have to do that. So my strategy for Etsy, I'll explain it to you guys right now. And I want everyone to take out their notepads and start writing this down is spend money on Etsy advertising right at the beginning. So that's on platform Etsy ads. I'll explain my strategy in a second for a very small amount. So we're talking starting $5 a day, going to a maximum of $25 a day, like very, very, very small amounts, okay? Whereas with Facebook and things like this, you're gonna be spending hundreds pretty much instantly, okay? So nothing like that. It's talking very, very small money. And the strategy is to spend anywhere from three to $15 testing an individual product. So what this means is we're mass testing products and we're just trying to test as many products as quickly as humanly possible. If you do use the product research method that obviously I've discussed in today's video, then it will be massively sped up. But typically, anywhere from $250 to $300 to a negative to get your store in the position 
where it's getting a lot of organic sales is very, very normal, okay? So you're gonna have to spend a few hundred dollars, like very, very small amount of money, okay? Anyone in anywhere, any first world country can obviously get their hands on a few hundred dollars. It's very, very simple. So let me talk about my specific advertising strategy. So you should currently be in the position where you've added products. Obviously, you've set up your account and your store. You found products, you've added products, and you've done all the listings, and you've pretty much done everything. You just need to start getting traffic now, okay? And then obviously, in the next step, we're going to be going over actually how to ship out your items, okay? So, so. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start your advertising at $5 every single day, okay? $5 every single day. And when you do this, you are looking at the individual products. So the way Etsy ads works is actually incredibly intelligent. It basically doesn't really allow you to mess it up, to be honest. There's not many, there's actually no settings. There's actually no settings. You can turn on and off individual products and then you set a budget for the entire store. And that's it. It's that simple, okay? So you're gonna set a budget for the entire store of $5 a day. Not $5 per product, $5 for the entire store, okay? And typically when you do this, you're gonna maybe have 10 products live on your store. That's kind of a good point to actually start advertising when you have 10 products live, one product added to your store each and every single day, okay? So $5 every single day. When that $5 fully spends, so with Etsy, sometimes it's gonna spend less, but when it spends $5 fully, that is a position where you can increase it if you want to and you have more money that you're able to spend on testing. Obviously, the faster you increase it, the more money, the sooner you'll be making more money and the sooner you'll be making, get through those products and find winning products, okay? But $5 a day, when an individual product has spent $3 and if it has a below 1% CTR, CR or click rate, that is when you turn it off. If it is spent between $12 and $15 and it has still made zero sales, that is when you turn it off, okay? Obviously, there's extra rules to this, okay? There's extra little things such as if it's spent between $12 and $15 and you've still got zero sales, but it's got a high click rate, there are actually things you can do to fix that, such as changing, obviously, the, the title, tags, description, but the pricing, mainly, that's obviously a big thing. If you're getting a lot of clicks, but then the price is too high, you're gonna piss people off and they're gonna go away. So, there's obviously extra little details. Sometimes $3, if you're going for products that are $100, $200 in value, that doesn't work, that doesn't make sense, so you, you have to spend more money. But the general blanket rule is, is it's just so, right? $3 below 1% CTR, turn off. $12 to $15 and zero sales, turn off. And that's turning off that individual product. We're gonna keep it as simple as possible. I don't want you guys to overthink things. Just run it like that. You'll make sales. Honestly, you will make sales. If you have five stores and you start five stores, the chances are four of them are actually gonna work. One or two of them are gonna work really well, but the other ones are gonna work pretty decently well, okay? And that's just the way Etsy dropshipping is right now. It won't be like this forever, but it is like this right now in February, 2024. There are so many people on the platform for Valentine's Day as well. There's so much opportunity right fucking now. Take opportunity, take it. Step five is the dropshipping method and actually how do you ship the items to the customer? So we're doing something called dropshipping. Very, very quick explanation if you don't know what that is. What you're doing is I'm say in Colombia, I'm actually in Colombia right now, my customer is in the UK, they've spent 50 pound for a resin lamp and my supplier is in China. I'm gonna give my supplier 20 pound and my supplier is not gonna ship it to me. They're gonna ship it directly to the customer in the United Kingdom and I take the 30 pound profit, right? So 50 minus 20 pound, I take 30 quid, okay? That's how it works, that simple. So who do you actually use as a supplier, right? There's two different kind of ways you're gonna do suppliers, right? You're gonna do it in the beginning, which we'll discuss in a second, and then after you've maybe got 50, 100, 150 orders, you're gonna get what is called a private supplier or agent. If you need one of those, you can obviously shoot me a message and I should be able to help you out on Instagram, on Telegram, somewhere like this, but this is a beginner's guide, okay? So AliExpress or CJ Dropshipping. Typically what I'd recommend, obviously I'm not being paid to say this, I have no affiliation with anyone basically, <laughs> but I have honestly had a lot of good experience with CJ Dropshipping, okay? Obviously there's problems, there's problems with anything out there, right? But CJ is kind of a decent, most of the time they offer pretty fast shipping, two and a half, two weeks, 
it's pretty reasonable reasonable pricing you can find a lot of products on there the support's okay and it's a reasonably trusted website okay so you buy from cj dropshipping you find the item on there and then you ship it to the customer if you can't find it on cj you can always buy it from aliexpress to be honest with the initial say 50 sales it doesn't matter that much okay what i want you guys to do is get the sales in the door okay i want you guys to get sales get money coming in and understand that making money online is possible if you understand that that's the more important thing than messing up some orders that get a little bit delayed and running into problems things like that you will figure all that stuff out right you'll figure all that stuff out right like just get started don't use shipping and drop shipping and be scared of it as the thing to hold you back from actually achieving your dreams and leaving your nine to five okay so use cj drop shipping or use aliexpress for the first 50 100 orders after that you're going to want to get a private supplier you can obviously message me but you can also find those on upwork and also facebook group chats as well there's literally tens and tens and tens of thousands of them out there so step six is about avoiding bans and also the potential problems that you can come across when you're doing Etsy drop shipping. So I've been drop shipping now on the platform for two and a half years. A lot of people say you can't do drop shipping on Etsy and those people are, to put it bluntly, stupid, okay? Etsy doesn't care if you're drop shipping. Etsy cares if the customer receives a good experience. So as long as you're giving a decent enough experience and you're not selling utter shit, obviously, sometimes you sell bad products by accident you then refund the customer normally there's no problems to be honest but one in ten thousand products are going to be a very very bad product we've actually had about four or five products out of the tens and tens of thousands of products we've sold where we've had to give refunds because of product quality so that happens a very small amount of time but my point is you are selling a good product to a customer that wants to buy it and they know what the price is and you're being truthful about the shipping time. So truthfully, Etsy doesn't care because Etsy's making money each time you sell something via fees, right? Percentage fee. So they're essentially your business partner. As long as their customers have a good experience on the platform, they're happy. So the main way to avoid bans and avoid all these kind of potential problems you may run into is think what is etsy wanting etsy wants a good experience for their customers so they come back again and again and again and if you provide a good experience to their customers and that means making sure your items are unique making sure your my items are interesting making sure you're just not copying every single other person on the platform for an infinite amount of time obviously it's okay a little bit in the beginning making sure you're not doing ip copyrighted products such as selling disney or marvel things like that most of the time you're going to be okay and you're going to be able to just keep selling and make loads of money. Obviously, just as with Etsy dropshipping and any other business model out there, you're going to run into problems and you're going to come across issues, okay? But with Etsy dropshipping, there is so, so, so few issues compared to Shopify, compared to TikTok shop, compared to all of these other things out there, okay? Etsy dropshipping right now is the biggest opportunity in e-commerce in 2024. I honestly believe anyone watching this right now that actually has a little bit of work ethic and a little bit of consistency can make $15,000 in the month of February with Etsy dropshipping. Obviously, this is a beginner's guide, so I haven't gone into the tiny little details about obviously starting your stores, and I haven't covered absolutely everything. And I also haven't covered about starting more stores and actually scaling your stores. If you would like more information about that, then you should check out the top link in the description, which is applyetsykings.com. Etsy Kings is my coaching program. It's a 70 part video course, access to accountability coaches, that have already done six and seven figures with Etsy dropshipping, in-person meetups, three times private weekly calls with me, access to a 600-person group chat, access to a bunch of extra things as well. If you want access to that, then apply to join down below in the top link in the description, applyetsykings.com. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos about making money online, doing dropshipping and doing Etsy dropshipping, make sure you subscribe to this channel right now. We're giving away a Rolex to one lucky subscriber when we reach 10,000 subscribers. And I'll see you guys next time.